Welcome to Envita Medical Centers of America. We're committed to educating you so that you understand the disease that you're fighting. Our goal is also to ensure that you are involved and informed in your treatment process. Oftentimes, patients know what treatments they are receiving, but they have no understanding of how those treatments work and why they need them. In this 15-minute video, we're going to explain to you the various ways that cancer grows and spreads. We will then explain how Invita's treatments target cancer from all angles and why our treatments are critical to ensuring that you have all the tools you need to fight against cancer. There are 11 key factors that affect the way that cancers grow and spread, and we will explain each one, and then explain how Invita's treatments address each factor. The first factor is necrosis and apoptosis. Apoptosis is simply the process that normal healthy cells use to kill themselves when things are going wrong within the cell. It's called programmed cell death, and within cancer cells, this no longer works or occurs the way it should so the cells grow uncontrollably. The second factor affecting the way that cancer grows and spreads is the P53 and the P21 genes. The P53 and P21 genes are responsible for turning on apoptosis, or programmed cell death. But when these genes are mutated, they are no longer able to perform this function. Chemotherapy and radiation can actually cause these genes to mutate and no longer function properly. The third factor affecting the way that cancer grows and spreads is microtubules. Microtubules are the skeletal structure of cells. They make up the architecture of the cell and there are chemotherapeutic drugs that are targeted to go after the skeletal structure of the cells, which affects its growth as well. The fourth factor affecting the way that cancer grows and spreads is the P-glycoprotein pump, which is a naturally occurring defense within our body. It's a pump within the cell that pushes chemicals out. As we increase chemotherapeutics within the body, this pump can become overly active and pump the chemotherapy out of the body, making it ineffective in treating the cancer. The fifth factor affecting the way that cancer grows and spreads is angiogenesis. Angiogenesis essentially is the way the tumor recruits a blood supply. It releases a chemical called VEGF that brings the blood supply to the tumor and the tumor needs this blood supply if it wants to grow beyond two cubic millimeters in size. So as a method of treatment, we want to block angiogenesis or the recruitment of new blood supply. The sixth factor affecting the way the cancer grows and spreads is the immune system and natural killer cells. The immune system is the first and last defense against cancer and is an area that is normally not addressed. Natural killer cells are a part of the immune system and are very important because they can target tumors and cancer cells and kill them. We also know that a number of chemotherapeutic drugs need the immune system to be intact for the drugs to be effective. Over 10,000 times each day, our immune system goes about destroying cells that could become cancerous. The seventh factor affecting the way that cancer grows and spreads is inflammation and infection. We know that inflammation plays a major role in cancer. Chronic long-term inflammations, allergies, or chronic infections can weaken our immune system and create an environment for cancer cells to grow and spread. The eighth factor affecting the way that cancers grow and spread is the MYC oncogene. The MYC oncogene basically is a gene that can become easily mutated by chemical carcinogens from the food, air, and water that we take in. Mutated genes can cause cancers to occur. Mutation of these genes can also occur through bacterial and viral infections. We see this with the human papillomavirus that can lead to cervical cancer, helicobacter pylobacterium that can lead to gastrointestinal cancer, or the hepatitis C virus that can lead to liver cancer. The ninth factor that affects the way cancer grows and spreads is exosomes. The cancer cells are intelligent and tumors are intelligent and they send out these little bombs called exosomes that target the natural killer cells of our immune system and they downregulate them or try to make them ineffective because they know that the immune system is out to destroy them. 
The tenth factor that affects the way cancer grows and spreads is estrogen receptors alpha and beta. We know that estrogen plays a big role in cancer growth. They play a role in cancers that are estrogen sensitive, such as breast, ovarian, and uterine cancer. The estrogen receptors are throughout the body and are found in the colon, found in the prostate, found in the lungs, found in the bladder, found in arteries. They therefore can play a role in these cancers as well. Chemicals in the environment that mimic estrogen in our bodies can cause tumors to grow anywhere there are receptors. The eleventh factor that affects the way that cancer grows and spreads is the milieu, or surrounding physical environment. Tumors need a certain environment for them to grow, and we'll use the analogy of fish. If fish are taken out of the water, they will die. They don't do well outside of that environment. Well, tumors also need a certain environment in the body to survive. They need an acidic environment that is low in oxygen. So by creating an alkaline, oxygen-rich environment, we can make it more difficult for cancer cells to grow and spread. A comprehensive cancer treatment program should target all 11 factors involved in cancer growth and spread. Invita's treatments can be used on their own or in combination with traditional chemotherapy and radiation. But unlike traditional chemotherapy and radiation which target only four of the factors involved in cancer growth and spread, Invita's treatments target all 11 factors.